Hello everyone. So welcome to my course on Laplace transforms. So today we are going to see what is Laplace of a unit step function. Then we will do a comparison between the first shifting theorem and the second shifting theorem. Then we will see what is second shifting theorem. I won't be taking the proof of second shifting theorem. And at the end I will take some examples on how to find Laplace and Laplace inverse using second shifting theorem that involves unit step function. So that's what the agenda is for today's session. So let's see what is Laplace of a unit step function. So in our previous lecture, we saw that unit step function is defined as zero whenever my t is less than a. That means whenever the input is negative, our output is zero. And whenever t is bigger than a, that means whenever the input is positive, your output is one. So what is the Laplace of unit step function? If I apply the definition and ultimately it is one for t bigger than a, you get e raised to minus a s upon a. So this is the Laplace of a unit step function. Okay, now that's one thing. Now let's see what is the second shifting theorem. Okay, suppose f is a function whose Laplace is f of s. Now if you recall what was our first shifting theorem? It says that if you multiply our function by an exponential function then it is nothing but you have to shift by a units in your s space. Okay, so if you are multiplying by a function in t space by an exponential function then what is the Laplace? There is a shift in s space. That's what the first shifting theorem says. Now what does the second shifting theorem says? It says that if you do a shifting in a t space then in the Laplace you have to multiply by the exponential function. So to be precise, we saw in our last lecture that if f of t is a function and if I want to shift it by a units on the right hand side, then how your function will look like? It is nothing but f of t minus a into u of t minus a. Now if you take the Laplace of this, it is nothing but you multiply by exponential in the s space that is e raised to minus a s into the Laplace of the original function. So first shifting theorem, it says multiply by exponential in the t space, there is a shift in s space. Second says if there is a shift in t space, then in the s space you have to multiply by the exponential function. So this is what the first and second shifting theorem is, shift in s space, shift in t space. And that's how the exponential also comes into picture. And then you take the Laplace inverse, you have this quantity, you take the Laplace inverse of e raised to minus a s into f of s you have f of t minus a into u of t minus a. Now let's take some examples. So let's start with the simple example. So function is sine of 3t interval is 0 to pi. So the question is you first express this in the unit step function and then you find the Laplace. So you want to express this in the form of a unit step function. So how do you write? So this is how you can write and we saw this in our previous lecture. So if you have missed my previous lecture, link is there in the description. Please have a look. Now as you can see, so whenever t is bigger than 0 less than pi, so whenever t is less than pi, input is negative, so output is 0, so you have only 1, which is nothing but sin 3t. Whenever t is bigger than pi, that means the input is positive, so therefore your output will be 1 and 1 minus 1 is 0, so that means nothing is there, so therefore this is same as this quantity over the interval 0 to infinity. Okay, now the next part is you need to find its Laplace, so I want to find the Laplace of this. So if you apply Laplace on both sides, Laplace of f of t is Laplace of sin 3t minus Laplace of sin into unit step function. Now this is easy, this I know, this is nothing but 3 upon s square plus 9. Now whenever you have a Laplace of unit step function multiplied with some another function, then always second shifting theorem will help you. Okay, but for the second shifting theorem, you have f of t minus a into u of t minus a. So you should have t minus into the picture. So here you have t minus pi. Here I need to bring t minus pi. Then only I can apply second shifting theorem. So what adjustment I will do over here? So you add plus minus pi. And then now you apply the formula sine of a plus b. So what do we get? So sine of 3 into t minus pi plus 3 pi. Now what is sine a plus b? Sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. Whole multiplied by u of t minus pi. Now you take this inside. But but sin 3 pi is 0, so this term will go away. So you have only this one term. What is cos 3 pi? Minus 1. So if I put these values over here, now you have everything in terms of t minus pi. Now you can apply your second shifting theorem. So now what does the second shifting theorem says? Whenever you have f of t minus a into u of t minus a, Laplace is nothing but e raised to minus s into Laplace of f of t. Now what will be my f of t over here? So my f of t over here will be, if I compare this with my second shifting theorem, you remove your t minus a. So this is nothing but sine of 3t. Right? Because then only your f of t minus pi will be sine of 3 of t minus pi. Okay, so here my f of t has to be sine of 3t so that here I get sine of 3 of t minus pi. So now by second shifting theorem, what do we get? 
e raised to minus a s so e raised to minus what is my a a is nothing but pi into f of s which is nothing but what is my function now this what is laplace of this 3 upon s square plus 9 so the final answer is 3 upon s square plus 9 into 1 plus e raised to minus pi s so that's the adjustment you have to always do whenever there is a unit step function involved okay so i hope this example is clear let me take one more example so the question is this is the function given to you express this in the form of a unit step function and find the laplace so there is a jump at 5 and 10 so before 5 it is 0 after 10 it is 0 and from 5 to 10 it is nothing but t so as we saw in our last session how do you express this function in terms of unit step function you write your f of t as u of t minus 5 minus u of t minus 10 and then now you multiply this inside so once i multiply this 3 inside this is what we have now here you have t minus 5 so if i want to apply laplace and i'm multiplying it by t so second shifting theorem f of t minus a u of t minus a so that t minus a t minus a should be there so here you have t minus 5 so here also you should have t minus 5 so that's why you adjust minus 5 plus 5 and here you have t minus 10 so here also you should have t minus 10 so you adjust plus minus 10 and now you keep t minus 5 you do this kind of bracketing and what do you have t minus 5 into u of t minus 5 plus 5 into u of t minus 5 minus t minus 10 into u of t minus 10 plus 10 into u of t minus 10 so this is what we have now okay good so you have t minus a t minus a t minus a t minus a now you can apply laplace so what would be laplace of this so here if you remove a so it is nothing but e raised to minus a s e raised to minus a s what is my a a is nothing but 5 so e raised to minus 5 s into laplace of f now here if i remove my a over here what is the function function is t and what is laplace of t 1 upon s square so this upon s square plus 5 what is laplace of a unit step function it is e raised to minus a s upon s minus again the same thing t minus a into u of t minus a so what is the answer it is e raised to minus a s into f of s now what is if I remove my a, what is the function? Function is t. And what is Laplace of t? It is s square, 1 upon s square. And then minus 10, e raised to minus 10s upon s. So that's how you find the Laplace using second shifting theorem. So whenever you have u of t minus a, along with it, whatever function you have, make sure you bring that minus a over here as well. So to bring minus a, you have to do plus a as well for that, so that the equation does not change. So that's how you find the Laplace using second shifting theorem. Now let's take an example on inverse and then I will give you some homework problem for practice. Laplace inverse of e raised to minus a s into f of s is f of t minus a into u of t minus a. And if you compare here and here, what is my a? If you compare your a is 1 and what is your f of s? Your f of s is nothing but s upon s square plus omega square or w square. Okay, so I have my a over here. Now I have f of s. So obviously what will be my function if you compare whose Laplace? is this and it is nothing but cos of omega t so i got the function i got my a so by second shifting theorem the laplace inverse is nothing but f of t minus a so this is nothing but cos of omega t minus 1 because my a is nothing but 1 into u of t minus 1 so that's how you find laplace inverse so whenever laplace inverse involves exponential think of second shifting theorem and for second shifting theorem you should know a once you have f of s you find the function whose laplace is this and then you are done let's take one more example you need to find laplace inverse of this quantity now here you have s square plus one so you separate your s square plus one so what do we get because laplace inverse is linear you have these two terms my suggestion is you always write your exponential separately because you should be able to know what is my f of s if I want to apply my second shifting theorem. So here if you compare Laplace inverse of e raised to minus a s into f of s. So for this thing your a is what? Your a is 2 pi and what is your f of s? Your f of s is nothing but 1 upon s square plus 1. Now whose Laplace is this? It is nothing but sine t. So by second shifting theorem this is nothing but f of t minus a. So sine of this is nothing but sine t. So sine of t minus 2 pi into u of t minus 2 pi minus here also what is your a your a is 8 pi and what is your function sine t so therefore what do you get you get sine of t minus 8 pi into u of t minus 8 pi and this is what you have using second shifting theorem.
Now one can further simplify this. What is sine of t minus 2 pi? It is nothing but sine t. What is sine of t minus 8 pi? It is nothing but sine t. So what do you have? You have sine t. You can take out sine t common. And what is left? U of t minus 2 pi. This is what the answer is. Actually one can simplify this further. You can say when the t is from 2 pi to 8 pi. When t is from 2 pi to 8 pi. What is this quantity? When t is bigger than 2 pi, this quantity is 1 t is less than 8 pi so this quantity is 0 so whenever your t is from 2 pi to 8 pi answer is only sin t and if it is for 0 to 2 pi answer is 0 for 8 pi to infinity the answer is 0 so that's also one more thing you can do but this is also fine so i hope the concept is clear now let's see some homework problems so solve these two problems and tell me the answer in the comment section and if you have doubt in any other problem, then you can ask me that question in the comment section as well. I will answer them. So I hope the concept is clear. If yes, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.